So in this video, we're going to talk about naming ethers, right? And remember, we said that ethers were some sort of O sandwich in the middle bonded to two arteries, right? Now it turns out that these have common names and IUPAT names, all right? So uh, uh, maybe we have something like this. What is the common name and what's the IUPAT name for this molecule? Well, the common name is that, okay, you identify your parent as some sort of ether, right? So we know we have the O here and we see what's bonded, the substituent. That's the substituents that's bonded on, on both sides of the oxygen. So we see that we have two methyl groups here. So the common name for this will be dimethyl ether, all right? Ether implying this O here and our substituent. Now, because we have two methyl groups, we signify this by dimethyl. All right. Now, the and this is the common. Now, the IUPAT name uh, will actually is actually methoxy uh, methoxymethane. Your longest carbon chain. You you identify your longest carbon chain. Your longest ca carbon chain in this case is actually. Um, uh, just one, it's methane. It's 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 uh, it's just a CH three, all right. And, and again, because that's your parent, right? So you identify your parent chain. Again, your longest continuous carbon chain is just one carbon. And usually we say that if we're talking about parent chains, it's not any substituent. We say methane, ethane, propane, etc., um, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So this is methoxy methane. Now this oxy here is something I want to emphasize whenever we deal with with ethers for their IUPAT names the substituent as a whole is called you know methoxy ethoxy propoxy and etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, let's go through a couple more examples to kind of hammer down this concept here so what if we have this molecule here all right what would be the the common name and the IUPAT name for this molecule. Well, again, start with the common, we identify our ether, our oxygen, and then we look at the substituent as bonded on either side. So again, let's count. We have one, two, three carbons. So we have one, two, three, all right? And on the other side, we have one, two. So we could classify this as a, as a um, ethyl, right as a substituent this is an ethyl group right as a substituent this is a propyl group one two three now obviously e comes before p so this is ethyl propyl ether right now let's look at the iupat name for this one this compound here what would be the iupat name again we identify our longest continuous carbon chain which will be a parent. So again, we have one, two, three. So obviously three is higher than two. So our parent here will be propane. All right, our parent here will be propane. Now in carbon one, we have this whole group here. All right, so in carbon one of the longest continuous chain, we have this whole group here. So we have one, two, and an oxygen. So because there's two carbons with our oxygen, this is called Ethoxy, ethoxy. So this is one ethoxy propane, right? One implying that the, 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 the whole ethoxy group is on carbon one. So this will be the IUPAT name for this molecule here. So let's look at a couple more examples. What if we were given this molecule here? Right, what would you name this molecule? Well, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna identify my longest, my longest car, uh, uh, continuous carbon chain, which will be one, two, three, four, five. So that will be pentane, right? This will be pentane, All right? And then I look at my substituent and where it's bonded. So in carbon one, two, we have this whole group here. All right, so the count this, so let's count our carbon as substituents. 
So we have one, two. This is longest carbon, uh, continuous carbon chain. So this would be two ethoxy pentane. Again, the two implying where this whole ethoxy group is located on the parent chain. Right. So that would be how we would name that molecule. And again, you could always uh, go by the common name. Uh, it does not matter. All right. So what if we're also given this molecule here? All right. How would we name this molecule here? Well, let's identify your parent chain. Let's identify your parent chain. So your parent chain is cyclohexane, right? So your parent chain is cyclohexane. All right. Now let's look at what's bonded off the substituents. Now, because we want to give our parent or substituent the lowest uh, possible numbers, well, this is this is going to have to be carbon one. So in carbon one, I have a methyl group. But in carbon one, also I have a one two. I have a, an ethoxy group. Ethoxy group. Now, because E comes before M, this would be one ethoxy. 1-methyl, put in my L, cyclohexane, and this would be how we would name these molecules. Now these are IUPAT names, IUPAT names, IUPAT. And again, you could always come up with the common names, just look at either side of your oxygen and kind of list them as substituent. All right, so what if we were given this molecule here? All right, what would be the name of this molecule here? Well, again, identify your longest con your longest continuous carbon chain. So one, two, three, four, five. So my so my uh, versus one, two, three. So obviously this one's out. So my longest continuous chain is pentane. So this will be my parent name. So this will be pentane. All right, this will be pentane. All right, uh, let's look at where or uh, ether group is bonded. So in carbon one, two, three, it doesn't matter either side we come from, we still, we'll, we, we'll still end up on carbon three. So this is one, two, three. So in carbon three, we have this whole group bonded on, on carbon three. So let's count our carbons. This is one, two, three, right? So we have three carbons. So it's methoxy, ethoxy, propoxy. Propoxy would be three, right? So this is actually, so, so the name for this compound all right, the name of the name of this compound here is uh, three propoxy propoxy three propoxy pentane. All right, this would be the name for this structure three propoxy pentane. All right, and then again, if you want to name it for the common name, this is the IUPAT name. But the common name for this, so look at your substituents. You have on either side of the oxygen, you have one, two, three. So that's a propyl. All right. And then here we have one, two, three, four, five. So that's a pentyl. So this is, well, P, E. So E wins out, right? Because they both start with P's. But propyl versus pentyl, you have a P, E, and a P, R. So this is pentyl, pentyl, propyl, ether. All right. And this would be the common name common name that would be the common name so let's look at uh, this one all right let's look at this molecule here how we were how we're going to name this molecule here well the common name for this uh the common name well look circle your oxygen and look at the substituents on either side. So over here we have a methyl, and over here we have a cyclopentyl. So this is cyclopentyl methyl ether. This would be a common name. Now, if you want to name the IUPAT name, we gotta identify our longest carbon chain. So our longest carbon chain here, or parent chain here, is cyclohexane. All right, and then the carbon one, 
because we always want to give our substituents the lowest possible number. On carbon one, we have this methyl group here, but it has an O, right? So this is methoxy. So this is one methoxy cyclohexane. And these structures are nothing uh, hard. Uh, this practice will will make them come. But this is how you name this is how you name ethers. And some professors actually want you know a specific. Um, you know, whether it's IUPAC or common name, I know when I'm taking it, I know when I took this class, my professor really didn't care. He just wanted a name that makes sense, okay? But that's how you would name ether compounds.